If you have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! post-2016, you may not be aware of how powerful Pendulum cards used to be. So powerful, in fact, that looking back at it now, it's unsurprising a Pendulum deck after the release of Breakers of Shadow became a Tier 0 deck overnight and required an emergency ban list to reel the deck in, but was still a powerhouse after those hits. And of course, I'm talking about the Pepe deck, named after the Pepe the Frog meme. My name is Avery, and this is a Pepe format retrospective. So Shadow, get ready to duel with new Pendulum Monsters, Magicians, and more! Plus, you'll get one foil card in every pack! Breakers of Shadow! Nine cards per pack, each pack sold separately. Now before the Pepe deck rose to Tier 0 status, Pendulums were already in the meta in the form of Cleaforts. It served as a powerful stun deck that could run a bunch of traps, as well as summon a nearly indestructible boss monster in the form of Apocalypse Fort Towers. So let's start our story from the point of the November 2015 ban list, now that you have this info in mind. Unlike the past several Forbidden lists, which had all largely consisted of small hits to competitive decks, or had seen the forbidding of extremely abusive combos such as the Dijin Lock or Dark Matter Rulers, the November 2015 Forbidden list served as a complete format reset. On it, every single deck that had been a force in the metagame for the past year saw hits that almost entirely removed them from the competitive scene. First off, Necroz got heavily hit, with Shuret being banned, and Necroz of Brionic and Unicor both being limited. These hits served to both destroy the deck's consistency with Brionic and Shuret, while also severely neutering one of its greatest power cards, Necroz of Unicor. Shadals were next on the chopping block and received just as bad, if not worse, hits than Necroz. El Shadal Construct was forbidden, and El Shadal Fusion and Mathematician were both limited. By removing Construct, the deck lost both its main power play and a lot of its consistency. At the same time, the hit to El Shadal Fusion removed the deck's OTK potential and Mathematician removed a key starter for the deck. Cleeforts also received hits in the form of Apaka Quilfort Towers being banned and Cleefort Scout being limited. These hits destroyed the Towers Turbo variant of the deck while also hindering consistency of any pure variant of the deck, relegating the deck to a shadow of its former self. Finally, Burning Abyss got away with arguably the least brutal of the hits to the major decks, seeing Seer Semi-Limited and Graph Limited. While these hits served to neuter the deck's consistency, its power plays were all still intact. The next two hits on the list were to two relatively minor decks that had not seen much success in the recent metas. Ritual Beast lost a large portion of their consistency by Ritual Beast Ulti Candlehawk being limited, while a variety of rogue and lower tier competitive decks, Masked Heroes and Satellar Knights among them, lost consistency with the limiting of reinforcement of the army. The the final notable change on this list was the forbidding of Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, a staple rank 4 Xyz monster. While there was no specific deck that utilized Exiton Knight better than others, the cards forbidding continued the trend started when Lavable Chain was forbidden of powerful generic rank 4 Xyz monsters being removed from the card pool. The complete leveling of the metagame was coupled with the release of a new booster set, Dimensions of Chaos. No, not Dimension Force, Dimensions of Chaos. This set introduced three new decks into the meta to fill the power vacuum left by all of the Duelist Alliance archetypes. These decks were Perform Age Pendulum, Magic Specters, and Cosmos. Perform Age Pendulum was a deck that used the Perform Age engine from Clash of Rebellions and combined it with two new Perform Age Pendulum monsters that were released in Dimensions of Chaos, most notably Perform Age Plush Fire. These cards, when combined with the generic Pendulum monsters that had been recently released, such as Luster Pendulum the Draco Slayer and Archfina Centric, allowed for a powerful generic Pendulum deck to rise up. Hence the deck, Pepe. The prevalence of Pendulum decks also caused Naturia Beast to become a common tech as it could prevent a player from playing any spell cards. This was achieved most commonly through the use of King of the Feral Imps to search out X Saber Palomaru, a level 1 earth tuner which could be used along with Perform Age Hat Trigger to summon Naturia Beast. The key reason that this Naturia Beast combo was so deadly was because of how consistently it could be pulled off due to the high searchability of both parts. The next major piece of the deck was the new prevalence of the Brilliant Fusion engine. Brilliant Fusion was released in Clash of Rebellions as support for a smaller casual archetype called Gem Knights, but would gain more widespread traction because of one generic Gem Knight fusion monster, Gem Knight Seraph Knight. While most Gem Knight fusions required a Gem Knight and a monster of a specific type, Seraph Knight required a Gem Knight and a light monster. This synergized greatly with Brilliant Fusion, which allowed for a Gem Knight monster to be summoned utilizing materials sent directly from the deck. While Brilliant Fusion already was useful for its ability to easily get Performage Damage Juggler or Performage Trick Clown into the graveyard, it also had the additional benefit of Seraph Knight granting an extra normal summon. This made extending plays into things such as Naturia Beast or Morxyz Monsters very easy for the deck. 
Outside of these combos, the deck focused largely on getting out Ignister Prominence the Draco Slayer, a synchro monster that could remove cards from the field without targeting or destroying them. The non-targeting nature of Ignister was particularly relevant considering the other two decks that rose up at the same time, Cosmos and Magic Specters. Cosmo was a deck that had been initially released as a TCG exclusive in Clash of Rebellions, but it never quite had the power or consistency to hold its own against the previous meta. However, Dimensions of Chaos introduced an important new member to the archetype that would change this, Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Dark Destroyer turned the archetype around by giving the archetype a boss monster with 3,000 attack that was untargetable and could destroy a monster when it entered the field. This last ability could easily be combined with the ability of all the higher level Cosmo monsters to special summon more Cosmos from the deck when destroyed to very easily OTK opponents. Magic Specters were a pendulum archetype released in Dimensions of Chaos consisting of low level pendulum monsters with weak attack and defense. Magic Specters were similar to Cosmo in that they were also untargetable, but unlike Cosmo, they were also completely immune to destruction by card effects. Their main strength laid in their ability to search out other Magic Spectre cards, most importantly the Magic Spectre specific spells and traps. The most prominent of these were Magic Spectre Tempest and Tornado. Tempest could negate either special summon or monster effects, while Tornado was able to banish monsters. All of these traps were fueled by tributing Magic Spectre monsters, but due to them being pendulum monsters, it was easy to maintain a full board of monsters to tribute for the spell and trap effects every turn. The combination of Magic Spectres and Cosmo entering the meta simultaneously created a trend of the game moving away from effects that targeted and or destroyed. This easing off of targeting created a very distinct split between the current metagame and older metagames in terms of the generic cards used. Previously, targeting had been the norm for effects, but now for decks to be able to compete, non-targeting and non-destruction removal was very necessary. The end result of this in the meta was that any older decks that had still been able to compete on the local level were no longer able to keep up with the power levels of the modern game. So before we get into decks that came back into the meta, let's talk about what happened with Pepe, or as one of my friends called it back in the day, PP One Touch. When Pepe entered the fray, it dominated everything in its path. There was no other deck besides Pepe itself that could truly catch up. And of course, when a deck destroys everything in the meta, it is bound to lead to a tier zero format. I remember attending YCS Atlanta and I was playing Cosmo, and I remember getting stomped by Pepe the couple rounds I played against it. Oddly enough, Performer Pal Pendulum Sorcerer actually received an errata to its effect shortly after its release. Its effect mistakenly said that after you destroy up to two cards on your side of the field, you could draw one card for each monster destroyed, when it was supposed to say for each card destroyed. Regardless, this deck could put out insane boards thanks to the power of not just Skull Crobat Joker and Pendulum Sorcerer, but also thanks to Performer Pal Monkey Board and Plush Fire, because for some reason Konami thought making Plush Fire a non-once per turn was a good idea. The typical ending board had Cyber Dragon Infinity Summon thanks to Teller Knight Ptolemus, along with any other negation cards it could run. Also, Wavering Eyes was very broken, just like almost every other card in this damn deck. So, lo and behold, Konami gave us an emergency ban list that I originally posted posted a video about, and it went something like this. That there's been an adjustment to the ban list. Yes, this is legit information, as you can tell by the uh, webpage, http, uh, yu gi cardcom I will have a link to this in the description. Hopefully, I'm one of the first, because Italian Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! memes just posted this five minutes ago, so let's get into it. In addition to the forbidden and limiting cards list, all tournaments held at Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series events, regional qualifier events, and UDS qualifier and invitational invites will have these additional deck construction rules. Performage Plush Fire, banned. Performage Damage Juggler, banned. Teller Knight Ptolemus, banned. Skull Crobat Joker, limited. Monkey Board, limited. Luster Pendulum the Draco Slayer Limited. This is referred to as the Adjusted List. The Standard Forbidden and Limited Cards list applies except where superseded by this Adjusted List. Additionally, official tournament stores are free to use the Adjusted List for locals if they wish, blah, blah, blah. So, we still have the same ban list as we had before, but basically, instead of having an emergency ban list, Konami now has this Adjusted List, <laughs> and... Uh, I'm so glad that Cosmos weren't hit. The only thing I'm going to have to take out now is my Teller Knight Ptolemus and put in something else. Alongside the three previously mentioned decks, the post-November Forbidden List meta also saw the resurgence of three decks that had come out earlier in the year, but had been overshadowed by the pre-November Forbidden List meta. These decks were Satellar Knights, Masked Heroes, and Infernoids. Satellar Knights flourished because of the ease with which they could rely on Floodgates, most importantly Anti-Spell Fragrance, which was able to completely stop the newly popular Pendulum mechanic. This was due to the fact that Pendulum Scales could not be set 
face down, meaning that while anti-spell fragrance was active, pendulum scales simply could not be activated. Masked Heroes, on the other hand, saw popularity because of how effective of a counter Masked Hero Dark Law was to Pendulum decks and even Cosmos, stopping Cosmos ships from floating and preventing Pendulum monsters from going to the face-up extra deck after leaving the field. The third deck, Infernoids, had not really been a force in the meta up to this point, but finally had a time to shine. The deck had been around since the beginning of 2015, but didn't really take off until the release of Infernoid Decatron in Clash of Rebellions. The deck was further supplemented by the release of the synchro monster Psyframe Lord Omega in September, which to this day still seems some play. A monster which allowed for the recycling of banished monsters, the key resource of Infernoid decks. Omega was also particularly useful in Infernoids because it could banish itself in the field, therefore working around the level limit Infernoids had for monsters present on the field. Infernoids most of all were able to be relevant due to their exploitation of Reasoning, a card which saw usage back during the GX era, but it's since fallen out of favor. Reasoning worked well with Infernoids because it allowed a player to keep excavating cards from their deck until a monster that could be normal summoned was reached. The factor that broke Reasoning, however, was that none of the Infernoid monsters could be normal summoned except for Infernoid Decatron, meaning that Reasoning could very easily fill an Infernoid player's grave in one fell swoop. Once the graveyard was filled, many of the more powerful Infernoid monsters could summon themselves from the graveyard by banishing other milled Infernoid monsters. Infernoids were also quite good against any other deck that used the graveyard, as almost all their monsters shared the effect of tributing themselves to banish a card from the opponent's grave. However, Infernoids ultimately couldn't compete with the extreme speed and power of the other meta decks of the time, especially Pepe, preventing them from penetrating the highest tiers in the meta. The last deck to be introduced in 2015 came out right before the end of the year in the form of a structure deck. This deck was Pendulum Magicians. Different from Pepe, Pendulum Magicians were unique for being the first deck to offer a truly generic 8 scale, allowing for the unrestricted and easy pendulum summoning of a wide pool of powerful level 7 monsters, most notably Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and Miss Valley Apex Avion. The deck had two major variants, Odd Eyes and Performage. The Odd Eyes variant focused on using Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon to get out rank 7 Xyz monsters such as Big Eye and the new Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon. This variant of the deck also took advantage of the highest level Magispector monster, Magispector Unicorn Kirin. While it was a Magispector monster, its level prevented it from actually being Pendulum Summoned in the deck without the use of a high scale from outside of the archetype. Its powerful return to hand effect and protection from targeting and destruction made it a very strong option in the higher level focused Odd Eyes Magician deck. The Performage variant of the deck was very similar to the Pepe deck, but with a much greater focus on the Pendulum Magician aspect. Preference was given to Wisdom Eye and Dragon Pulse Magician, as both of these cards were level 4, allowing for easier rank 4 Xyz plays. Although Performage Magicians established themselves as the better variant of the deck, the scarcity of high-level events during December 2015 prevented conclusive results proving this from being generated. As the second year of the Arc V era came to a close, so did the first half of this period in the game's history. While the game had seen a significant increase in the speed and power of meta decks, only a hint was seen of the extent of the meta would reach in the coming years. One thing was for sure though, Yu-Gi-Oh was advancing at a continually more and more rapid pace that had no indication of stopping anytime soon. So if you like modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you will love this format because it's just as fast, if not arguably faster in some ways, than even current Yu-Gi-Oh. I hope you guys enjoyed that Pepe format retrospective. If you did, be sure to leave a like. I feel so bad that a bunch of time has passed since my 2004 Chaos Control format video. It's been over a month at this point, probably by the time you see this video. And, uh, you know, I just got busy with life. Uh, it takes a lot of time and research to do these videos, and I want to make sure that everything's right. Um, so I do apologize about that. But I hope that you did enjoy this video, and I hope that you'll subscribe and hit the bell and the like button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.